Hey, my loves, welcome to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment because I love to bump gums with you. Hope you enjoy. Hello, gorgeous. Welcome back to the Give Them Lala podcast. I feel like it's been forever since we've been here. Why is that? I feel like it too because we recorded your pregnancy episode early. So we didn't even review last week's Vanderpump. Because we went to New York for Watch What Happens Live. (gasps) That also feels like 100 years ago. We've been doing a lot. That was less than a week ago. That was a week ago. A week ago. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yep. That was legit. How is everyone feeling? How are you feeling, La? You're a pregnant lady. Yeah. New York was awesome. Um, I went, I stopped at Amazon Lives Studios, which I have uh, never been there before. It was fantastic. The amount of love that I got, because I was very nervous to announce the pregnancy, because again, we talked about this. Most people are not as progressive as we are. Mm -hmm. And I was just nervous about what people would say, but there was an outpour of love and support. And doing Watch What Happens Live was, I had the best time. I just felt very, like I said, supported and almost like I was put in like this little incubator where I was like, let's protect the mother. (laughs) (laughs) Let me tell you, your look, I say this every time. It's so annoying by now. Might have been, that might be my favorite look. You know what though? You're not the only person to say that this was the favorite. It was so good. It was very feminine. Which I liked. Easton, you act like you want to well, say no, something. Well, no, I was going to say, did you dress yourself? No, 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 no. Oh. Lena, who does my hair when I'm in New York, she, I texted her and I was like, I'm feeling a lot of pressure. Can you like take something off my plate by dressing me? Keep in mind, the last time I did Watch What Happens with that more sporty look and the headband, I went to New York and basically brought an outfit that I didn't even try on. And then when I tried it on for Watch What Happens, I was like, Selena, we're in a bit of a bind. <laughs> you took my outfit. I, I have, I did. Yeah, I yeah, took your outfit. You took my... Well, that was the backup. Yeah. The backup didn't work. The other outfit didn't work. So Lena ended up dressing me for that too. And I was somewhat, I had a little bit of a gut at that point in time. Okay. And I was like, we have to make sure that, like I have to wear a jacket. Yeah. There's no way. Because it's not like cute. People are going to think I've been skipping out on the gym. (laughs) Um, There's only a few weeks of that, I feel like, with most pregnant people. Where it's like, oh, interesting, you know. eating well. Yeah, they're eating good. I'm not pregnant, just eating good. It's like, and it's a very soft feel. Like, thickness and not in, like, the good I'm Jennifer Lopez kind of way. What's your favorite? (laughs) You know? What's your favorite, like, week or... What trimester? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of pregnancy. That's a good one. I oh, would say. I guess is the only. Way once I was it. like five, six months, you're cute and showing. Once you venture into like the third trimester, you're like, get out of me. Really? And Ocean was small. She was. She, you know, was weighing in. <laughs> <laughs> she weighed in <laughs> at a whopping. Five pounds, ten ounces, <laughs> Ocean Kent. <laughs> oh, that's she basically so just like slipped out of the vagina, and even <coughs> that size of a baby, I was like, the, my rib cage. She would like shove her foot up there, and I'm like, <laughs> get out of there! It's so uncomfortable. How weird is that? That is so weird to me that there is can, there's a body in you. Just That's moving crazy. around. That's crazy. And also, like, how can it be in there? You have organs and bones. It's crazy to and me. And then your organs move to make room. No, it's, the and then, female body, and what it can do is beautiful. It's f- That is so cute, Eve. Oh, I think it's welcome. horrific. No, I'm just kidding. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Horrific like, to look at. Can- you don't support other women. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a husband. <laughs> you don't have a husband. <laughs> that is a funny story. Speaking of which, it was Ocean's birthday party over the weekend. Mm-hmm. It was troll themed. She stayed in her princess poppy dress for all of maybe 30, 35 minutes until her friends got there. They all go into her bedroom and come running out with princess dresses. It was like it was so cute. Disneyland had thrown up. And I was like, well, so much for the troll theme. <laughs> <laughs> Like, literally, I would not let her wear her princess poppy dress because it was so cute. And I'm like, you can't ruin it before your birthday. I should have just let her wear it because 
She we got zero use it. out of it. I was going to say, if you did a princess birthday theme, I promise you she would have probably worn the poppy dress. So that's, that's probably how it works. true. That's and Hartford had a princess theme birthday and uh, all the moms know, don't F with the theme. Uh, you know, you yes, can do it yes. next year. Girl. Right. Sure. Um, so that was really amazing. Uh, she had the best time. She said it. Best birthday party ever. <laughs> no, she didn't. She certainly did. <gasps> she was so cute. She got so many toys. I was like, what are all of these gifts? So many dresses. Oh, I have her gift in my house. I forgot it once and I forgot it again today. Love that for me. But she picked it out, so I know she'll like it. Don't worry. It's all <laughs> fine. Um, but the other day, we have a picture of my dad out. And my daughter knows that's Poppy, right? Oh, Princess Poppy. Poppy. Grandpa Poppy. <laughs> Um, so she points at it. She's like, that's Poppy. I go, yeah. And Poppy is mom's dad and Gigi's husband. And she looks at it and goes, this is Gigi's husband? I said, yes. She goes, you don't have a husband. <laughs> <laughs> this is correct. And although I want to bitch slap you, I cannot do that for you just spitting facts. You don't have a husband. <laughs> it's just a fact. That's hilarious. And not an insult. No, it's a it's fact. It's a fact. Honestly, nowadays she that's not an insult is. at but all. But don't you think that's like pretty legit of a, she'll be three on the 15th. Don't you think it's pretty legit that my child knows? Like she was putting it together. Like if this is Gigi's husband and I know what that means, I know my mom doesn't have one. Exactly. No, that's why I'm saying she's a genius. She's Mensa. Uh, she's let's Mensa. not go. I did see a child on Instagram who is indeed Mensa and she's a genius. And I'm like, okay, well, my, my kid just talk real good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she puts things together in her mind. You see it. And I've seen her secretly laugh at some of my adult jokes. Not inappropriate, but like I use sarcasm and I'll be like, I'll say something to Lala or Lisa. And I like out of the corner of my eye, I see Ocean go like, <laughs> and I see her laugh. And I'm like, did you just understand that? Or I think she understands. Yeah. She gets it. Yeah, she totally gets it. She so does. the crew left uh, The crew left on Sunday because mm -hmm. we had family come out. The Russins came out for Ocean's birthday. It was a really fantastic weekend. It was a lot of celebrating, and I have to be honest, today I am exhausted. Why are you exhausted? Because we talked about this in the car, but I want you to share with your friends. Well, you guys know me, and I love celebrating and doing all the things, but I get um, interaction hangovers, mm -hmm. where when I have too much uh, human interaction, even if it's my best friends in the world who I love, which this weekend was very much my best friends in the world who are like family, I just tend to kind of power down. Yeah. Yeah. Which is all good. Mm -hmm. Are you like that, Easton? Yeah. Or are you, you feed off of, because I feel like your mom is not. No, we talked my mom about this loves before. Being, she, she has feeds to off have of, yeah. somebody near her. Right. Feeds off of, it's the introverted extrovert thing. It's, uh, she feeds off of people's energy. And us, we recharge being alone, and your mom recharges being around people she loves. It's interesting. She's got to figure that out. <laughs> well, yeah, because we're loners. We're like, okay. Bye. <laughs> Remove yourself. <laughs> Time for me to unwind. Um, did you guys hear about this woman? This is kind of old news, but Lisa's been begging for us to talk about it on the podcast. Woman who didn't know how much her husband was worth. He dies. She finds out that they were worth $2 billion. <gasps> she donates a billion to the Albert Einstein School of Medicine. And now there is no tuition to be paid ever. Your child decides they want to go to this school. Come one, come all. I mean, you got to be serious about it. Let's just not the, choose this be school for the hell of it. Well, you, you have, have to, to be accepted. apply. Yeah. yeah. Th that process still exists, obviously. <laughs> but isn't that incredible? That is, I just, I have a couple questions. How did she not know, I wonder? They just kept their finances and stuff separate? Like, how did, were they rich and she just didn't realize how rich he was? I think that's what it was. That's what it was. Okay. You can't hide. I feel like you can hide 10 million. Yeah. 20 million, 30 million. You can kind of like fly under the radar. You have $2 billion. You're living good. Right. But you just may not know because that's impossible to spend. But depending on what work you're in, because Warren Buffett, if he wasn't in like the limelight, yeah. He does everything that a regular person would do, and he's worth billions. And unless you didn't know him through 
him doing the brackets or RC Willie, you wouldn't know who he is. You know what that is, my friends? That is wealth. That's the difference between being wealthy and being rich. I don't know though. Look at Kardashians. They flaunt their wealth. That's just that's called true. that's just called people who are old school where money you didn't have anywhere, you didn't have a platform to like show it. So what mm. was you know? Yeah. Like what was the point of like getting all these things if it like what for yourself? <laughs> well, that's what it should be for. <laughs> but now everyone does it for the gram. Yeah. I was about to say that's why they keep up to date. Yeah, yeah. you'd like it's all about what's the post worthy. You got to keep on that persona. Yeah. If you guys each got 2 billion dollars today, how oh. would your life would be different? How, how would, would my life be different? Yeah, what would you do? I'd live probably in Hawaii or Puerto Rico, I would delete my Instagram. No one would ever hear or see me ever again. Really? Ever. Oh, yeah. And you don't I would think be, you'd get sick of that nope, and want to? Off the grid. Really? With the yeah. family? Oh, yeah. With my family. Okay. Friends Bring them all. flying out every single weekend. Come, how, like, what do you want? I would employ all my friends. No one would have a job. Wow. Oh, yeah. Or they'd all have a job. And then you, no one have gonna, a regular, they'd all yeah, just be yeah. my entourage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Don't do shit. Just relax. Get to, I just want to be that, around you. Within you get to create yeah. so many fun things that can yeah. make money. You know? Yeah. That's what's fun. That's the other thing. I think I would stay creating because that fuels my soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe you would hear from me again because I love the podcast. But socials, I'd be completely off of mm -hmm. and you would, someone would be running it. I'd run it. Well, I'm not worth $2 billion and you still do that. So <laughs> my life would pretty much be the same. <laughs> but I'd live on an island. <laughs> <laughs> where I didn't have to see anybody who wasn't part of my circle. Right, right. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I love you guys. You're all a part of my circle, so please don't take offense to that. Okay, so that happened. Um, did you guys... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, you guys. This idiot, and I can just tell what kind of guy that this is because this is the type of guy who I'm sure when I first moved to LA, I kicked it with. <gasps> This is the type, like just a, a uber douche. Wait, stop. Okay, me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna out his name, but on Twitter he says, "At Elon Musk, the Beverly Hills hotel valet just crashed my friend's brand new cyber truck outside, pulling it around. Can you help out and get another? First of all, let me tell you something, my friend." <laughs> As someone who does not have a cyber truck but has been to the Beverly Hills hotel a uh, many of time. Yes. The valet, because it shows a picture. It doesn't even go it's that It's crashed way. into the Beverly Hills Hotel entrance. Okay. Number one, they don't pull onto Sunset and round the, the block to yeah. get the car back. They pull out and they pull up. So, not true. Your, your friend crashed this car. Right. And it looks as if he's coming off of, let me see, this direction. Is I want to say Crescent. And just hauled ass into the Beverly Hills hotel entrance. With a cyber truck. Yeah. And one one reader. Um, also. The driver was actually the owner of the cyber truck. Valet was not even open at that point in time. Yeah. Not shocking. Also cameras everywhere. Are you an idiot? Like, <laughs> no. If, for real. It's just so dumb. Well, I was more offended by like, if you know how valet works at Beverly Hills Hotel, you would know that they don't pass that sign yeah. to get your car to you at the front. How yeah, do we well, feel about the cyber trucks? Um, I think they're... You think they're they, gaudy and ugly? No, I actually think they're really cool looking. I'm okay with them. I really like... It makes I, me feel like I would be in the movie Dune. One. Yeah. <gasps> Have you seen it yet? Dune 2? I've only seen Dune 1. Mm, Dune 1 was good. I want to see Dune 2, though. <laughs> me, La, Lisa are going to go to... IMAX, IMAX and, and see, see Dune because there's only nine theaters in America that show it in that like in 70 inch or something like that. Damn. I could be way off. 70 but, inch, right? Or 70? 70 inch. No. What is it? That's the size of TV in my <laughs> the, bedroom. And it's isn't it 70 inch though? Or 70 feet. 70 millimeter. Jeez, the we. 70 millimeter yeah. is way too big. <laughs> it's millimeters. Yeah, I was so, going to say. There we go. Producer John and Easton. We're over here really <laughs> just. Thinking, whoa. I could just watch millimeter. it in my bed. Wait, yeah. 70 millimeters is so small, you guys. Isn't that like centimeters, but smaller? I think. I don't is, know. But I'm bad at rulering. All I'm I know is Google it's IMAX. the biggest one. There's only nine of them. It's 70 something. All I know is you can lay down and, you can and lay I'm down. packing blankets and <gasps> all of my um, barefoot dreams. <laughs> 
How Ooh. tall is an IMAX screen? 70 millimeters. No, 70 meters. 22 Seven. meters. 16 meters high, 22 meters wide. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> there we Thank go. Thank you for Googling. If you like saving money, and let's face it, who doesn't, then you have to get Rakuten. We love Rakuten at my house and the Rakuten app. I mean, seriously, Rakuten shoppers get it all when it comes to shopping. The hottest brands, the best deals, and the most savings, which to me is the best part. With Rakuten, you get cash back at stores you love, which is probably why I bought so many things for myself when I was trying to do birthday shopping for Ocean. Because it's hard not to throw a couple of things in the car for myself at Bloomingdale's. And then with all the money that I saved, I went straight to Fenty Beauty. But you can get cash back at stores like Dyson and Petco. You'll also never miss out on promo codes and coupons because Rakuten gives you all the best ones. You can even stack cash back on top of sales, credit card points, and other loyalty programs. And it couldn't be easier. Just join Rakuten for free. Then use the website or the app to shop your favorite stores and watch your cash back add up. So before you buy another thing, join Rakuten because Rakuten shoppers always get the most bang for their buck. Get started at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. Can I just tell you that Etsy gift mode has changed my entire life? There's no more panicking or completely stressing out when I have to find the perfect gift for someone because I'll be honest, I am the worst gift giver ever. And it's been an amazing thing when it comes to Ocean and her birthday because when someone asks me, what can I get Ocean? I can point them to gift mode on Etsy. With gift mode on Etsy, it's so easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all of the people in your life, like the dog lover, the concert goer, the fashionista, the reality TV fan, or in Ocean's case, the creative kid. There is literally something for everyone on Etsy. Like I said, Ocean's birthday is just days away, and I have found her so many cute things on Etsy. I got her the cutest personalized book specifically for her third birthday, and I found this really cool personalized LED neon sign for her new big girl bedroom. And of course, I loaded up on hair accessories and jewelry. A gifting moment is always around the corner. But whether it's a birthday, an anniversary, a holiday, or even just a day to say thank you, Gift Mode on Etsy has you covered. Need to find the perfect gift? Don't panic. Try gift mode on Etsy now. Really quick about the Cybertruck, you guys, and I want to put this out there, is that I love it so much because I'm a big, like, apocalypse, end of the world person. I want a bunker one day. I want all of that. The thing that bugs me is that it's not, it's, it's electric or whatever. It's basically like if an EMP, I think that's what it calls, ever hit and shut down all of computer systems, our cars would also be shut down. So then you can't use it because I would like it to be gas. I would like it to have the ability to be gas powered. Like either or. Or both. Or like you have the ability to gas. That's it. I didn't mean either or. I meant both. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I just meant either. <laughs> you could do either. You could do gas yes, or power. Like you could do either. Not the or. Take the or out. <laughs> Are we okay today? Are no, we okay? No, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not good at I'm ruling. Barely that my, just hit me and it made me laugh. I'm not good at <laughs> ruling. You guys, you. in high school, we had to do the ruler, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and like mark what was what as a test. Yeah. She made me stay after. And she was like, I think we need to go over the ruler a little longer. I was like, bitch, <laughs> I'm never going to use this fucking ruler. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> this is sewing class. Are you fucking thinking I'm going to be making my kids clothes? You're out of your goddamn mind. I got to make it to the black box theater. I'm about to be famous, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and now look at you. The Not gut laugh. Ruler. The gut laugh is so good. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Ethan. No. And we're back. We're back. We're a mess. No. <laughs> what? Why? It happened every, every day. I got chills. I got chills. Every day he smacks his funny oh. bone. He goes, because, oh, oh. oh. Because you got Are those, you okay? You got those yeah. limbs. Do you know why they call it a funny bone? Because why? Not funny. everyone uh, around you. Because everybody else oh, is laughs. funny for it. Yeah. Oh, because everyone else laughs. Oh, ooh, ass. That was a good one, though. That was ooh, maybe tip of the phone. Oh, I'm sorry. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving along. We are a disaster. Okay, can I clarify something before we move on? Yes, please do. I just think it's it just, uh, I love that we just talked about the ruler <laughs> and then what Fox News 
wrote about me as a headline after I announced. What? Vanderpump Rules Lala Kent says, looks, intelligence, were low on the priority list when choosing sperm donor <laughs> for a second baby. Okay. And also, Fox News intelligence is low on your priority list as well. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but it was that. No, I saw that shit and I was like, so let me clarify. Yeah, clarify. Okay. Looks were low on the priority list because I'm a five star banger. All right. Like, no matter 100%. what, my looks are going to outweigh. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> However, <laughs> We have really strong genetics. Yeah. Okay. And I just know like kids come how they are. I've seen parents who are banging and their kids are like a little, mm, and I've seen parents who are like, mm, and their kids are banging. Mm. We're not going to name names, Easton. Thank you. I was a very oh, was horrific it? kid. I'll name names. Me. Me. And my parents are cute. Your and parents I are was super horrific. Hot. But look at you now, girl. Thank you. So Glow that's up. why looks didn't matter to me. Okay. Mm. The intelligence thing, it was not like I was looking for some dumbass, right? But in their profile, the donor profiles, they state like their education level, right? And there there were some people who had PhDs, they had double masters, they had blah, 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 all the stuff that I most certainly, even if I put my mind to it, like my mama says, could not do. <laughs> and I was that wasn't... I didn't look and go, I want to make sure that I get the guy who has a PhD from a really good school. Yeah. That wasn't on your list. Not at all. Or your importance of importance. Yes. Yeah. But most of the, most of the donors that I, that were on, uh, on the site, most of them did have college degrees. Yeah. I'm just saying I didn't look for the smartest in the bunch. You didn't look for the rocket scientist. No, which by the way, I think there were some of <laughs> no, those. There no, there were. They were like really very, very smart. There were. Can you tease that you kind of go over this process on Vanderpump this season? And that'll be fun to see. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I We you, can tease that. Yeah. And, so. um, my friends participate yeah. in looking over the donors. Here's the thing. If you're going to choose... Are you going to choose, this is just a fun game because you don't have to choose, but common sense or book smart? Well, I'm going to choose common sense mm -hmm. because that means I could throw you out into the real world and you're going to make it work. Mm -hmm. Also, let's remember, let's say that I have a baby who with a donor who is high level smarts. Let's remember that dad is not around. Let's say that they get the, the donors smarts. The donor ain't around. I, I can't keep up. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to me about <laughs> going to the moon? Uh, say what? I don't know. I can't stimulate this mind of yours. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to call someone in. You know so Ocean's going to be a genius or, in school. I just feel it. And you're going to be how like my dad I don't dad think was. she is going to be a genius You don't in think school. numbers and stuff? No, I think my child really? has a super creative mind. She doesn't want to sit and do the same thing over and over again. Yesterday, I kid you not, she she changed 14 times. <laughs> she, this girl changed 14 times. Did she? Oh, she yes. opened a new... A new gift, new dress. I'm gonna put that one on. <laughs> there it went. So, and she's I'm okay so with cute. that. She, she's yeah. probably gonna be more of a creative. She's gonna where be like, like me in school, from what it kind of looks like. Mm. She doesn't. She's she wanders. She yeah. creates. She Any it, right? Don't you feel like that? I feel like I see that. She in her wanders and yeah. creates. Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. I also wanted to very quickly shout out these five couples, long-term couples, who have decided to never get married. All right. <gasps> I'm gonna put it out there. Okay. okay. Thriving, thriving. Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn together 40 plus years. Goldie Hawn said, we chose not to get married because I love waking up to him every single day and knowing I get to choose if I want to be here or not. And I stay because I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. Not because I have to worry about like, well, if we separate, it's a lot of paperwork. Yeah. Okay. We got... Oprah Winfrey and Stedman Graham. They started dating in 86, got engaged in 92, never married. Bravo. Enrique Iglesias and Anna Kornikova together since 2001. Maya Rudolph and Paul Thomas Anderson since uh, 2001. Vin Diesel and Paloma Jimenez, 2007. <gasps> Jessica Walter and Kyle Lampy. I'm just kidding, but we did just talk <laughs> about that. I was like, what if we <gasps> never... What if we stay engaged forever? And Kyle's like, to be honest, great. They would freak. Your parents would freak. That's not about them. I'm just saying. What you would know. they do? Because he's my person forever. And I'm like, what? It, I mean, they would just, 
they would be disappointed because simply because if I have a child out of wedlock, is that what it's called? Out of wedlock. You'd have a bastard child. Yeah, but I don't, I just want, I don't know. Turns into a therapy session. <laughs> We're like, what do you want? I can to see it just coming. You're no, in a safe all, space. What? Fogs were turning. <laughs> what's, ex- what's great, though, is that Kyle is so on, like, he's so just, like, chill and great about it all. If I said, like, hey, look, I just want to stay engaged forever and still have a baby, he'd be like, great. Great. The only thing he would say is, like, we're going to lose out on tax stuff, but whatever. That's, like, because taxes, you get a benefit if you're married. Oh. Right. But then when it ends, it's, like, when what the ends? Tax the benefit? marriage? Yeah. Oh, but our marriage isn't going to end. Well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so upbeat today. <laughs> well, bravo, couples. Thanks for paving the way. Sorry, Thanks for Jess. paving the way to nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> to um, disappointed parents. Okay. Uh, did anyone watch Oscars last night? Nope. nope. Me neither. But I did uh, <laughs> stalk Vogue. Oh, I did see that. To see who was wearing the looks? what. Yeah. Same. Uh, yeah. Who did you love? Because Kendall. Uh, Kendall looked at, well, Kardashian Jenner clans always, to me, are like show stopper, jaw. Kim, and, yes, Kim and Kendall. I was, Kylie always looks stunning, but I didn't really like the floral on the front. Why? I don't know. I thought it was so feminine and sweet. You did. And I love that she's got the shorter nails now. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the natural makeup. I thought I thought all three of them looked absolutely stunning. Mm. Um, America Ferrera, I don't I don't think we're supposed to comment on people's bodies anymore. But I think when someone looks slamming, that they deserve to know it. Mm-hmm. Not that she gives a fuck what I think, <laughs> but America Ferrera's body, incredible at the actual Oscars. I didn't even see. Oh my God. She looked so fantastic. I was digging all the minimal makeup. (gasps) Minimal makeup is in. I need to take notes. Yes. And like, like soft, soft, old school Hollywood hair. Um, Mm -hmm. Margot Robbie looked fantastic. Oh wait. I actually want to copy Margot Robbie's hair at the Oscars. Mm. For the Vanderpump Rules reunion. Really? Because <laughs> it's like our Oscars. Because we were we filmed that on Saturday. Yeah, I loved her hair. I thought it was so, so amazing. Stunning. Also, America Ferrera looks. That pink dress, is that what you're talking about? Let the me body? see it because there's Vanity Fair. So good. And absolutely phenomenal. She looks. Everyone was giving me a little bit yeah. old school Hollywood last night. Yeah. All the little a li- little a lister, you know, all you cute little a listers <laughs> out at the Oscars. It was so sweet. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Ever heard Robert of Robert Downey Con? Jr. Though Robert Downey what? Jr. won. <gasps> he his did his first Oscar. What did he win for? Op- his first for I'm Oppenheimer. Pretty sure it's his first. Yeah, we, we need a Google supporting. check. You're telling okay. me no. the, the Iron Man has not a one Oscar, but now for Oppenheimer, I believe it. Robert. Downey Jr. Let's see. One. It's true. One. First it is Oscar true. Okay, producer John says Come on. Oppenheimer was fantastic. But yeah, he uh, won it for best supporting actor. Well, as he should. Yeah. It was uh, what won film of the year? Do we know? Do we know best film? Kyle and I have to add it to our Oscar Cinema Club. I hope it was Oppenheimer. Best film. Oscars. What was it? Oh, I think it was Oppenheimer. Bang. It was? Yeah, they cleaned up. Oh Even my gosh, Killian for the Murphy. first time in like ever, I watched uh, oh. the Oscar winner before <laughs> it won the Oscar. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like when, what was that movie? Everywhere, not, not, anywhere, all at once or whatever. Less, no, that? I oh. didn't watch that. What was not, not term, what was it? Not termite, Parasite. Oh, yeah. Parasite. I watched it after it won. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. Oh, incredible. Oh, my God. So, so good. good. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm glad that we were... See? Again, Google. <laughs> Google, my right. friends. <laughs> you right. were. Good job. Um, I thought that this was really interesting, and then we're going to move on to Vanderpump Rules. Um, I think you say it. Mooney Long. Mm-hmm. She's a songwriter. Uh, came out in Complex with an interview that said she wrote Rihanna's California King Bed in 10 minutes. So that she could go back to shopping for furniture. Stop. <laughs> yes. I was like, 
Now that's talent, bitch. That's right? talent. You're like, I guess I better whip this song together for Rihanna. So I, I could get back. Gotta get back to buying my own <laughs> California King bed. That's the song, California King bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Isn't that crazy? Oh my God, I love that. I was like, you go, bitch. You, you do the go. damn thing. When it comes to travel, we all have that happy place we're always daydreaming about. Whether it's a snow-capped mountain white sand beaches, or even a hometown visit. We all have that happy place. I know for myself, Easton, my mom, and I think Jessica too, that place just became Hawaii. We had such an amazing time there last fall that I think it's going to become a yearly trip. The beautiful beaches, the amazing food, and the fact that we completely chill. I'm not sure it gets any better than that. Whatever your happy place is, Priceline wants to get you there for a happy price. So you never have to miss a trip. So we rented our car in Hawaii through Priceline. And if I told you how much money we saved, you would not believe me. And did you know that when you bundle and save with Priceline, you can save up to $625 when you book your flights and hotels together. Just use Priceline and simply book your entire trip in one place. They truly have deals you can't find anywhere else. So download the Priceline app today to save up to 60% off select hotels and go to your happy price with Priceline. If debit is your go-to card, Discover thinks it's time you get rewarded too. So check out Discover Cashback Debit, a game-changing checking account with cash back on everyday debit card purchases. That's right, cash back isn't just for credit cards anymore. Whether it's gas, groceries, or dinner with friends, you can start earning cash back. And did I mention there are no fees, period? Check out transaction eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank member FDIC. All right. Did we watch Vanderpump Rules? Yes. It's so great. It's picking back up. Well, last week, we didn't get to talk about last week, but last so week was great. intense. How do we yeah. feel about last week? How did you feel about last yeah. week? I remember that trip so well. Mm-hmm. And it was. Vanderpump has has been um, just a little bit heavier this season. That trip was one of the more um, more depleting of the trips. Was it that day that we did the the boat and sh- and we did the therapy type session? Sheena was nonstop sobbing her eyes out. I've never seen her like that ever in my life. It was very intense. Yeah, and in the moment on the boat when I lose it on Sandoval. That was intense for me because there are certain things like that, that, that la la lives within me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I try my very, very hardest at times to convey myself properly and keeping my tone down, but I can't help who I am. And there are times my mom always says you're in charge of your own emotions, but at the same time, I can't help when that fire in my chest starts coming up. And that's the reaction that someone gets. And then I leave feeling like, why did I do that again? And it really is going to be me. And I I don't think it's trauma. I don't, because even when my life was like, even when I was a young child, Mm -hmm. Candace, my best friend from back home said, you've always been like this, where when someone says something that you don't like, or someone hurts someone that you love, you immediately attack. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be retraining myself. And that's hard to do at the age of 33 to be like, okay, I know that you are overly stimulated. There's fire in your chest, but we're going to need to like, you know, when you're looking at it, like a dog is getting aggressive and you keep trying to get the dog to like see you and it's looking right through you and it's laser focused on what it wants. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And no one can tell me otherwise until I kind of just come to again. Can I ask you a question versus what how your experience with Sandoval and Katie? And I know we're jumping into this week's episode. Well, let's jump into this week's episode. I just want to know because I, I hear you, what you're saying about Sandoval, but then with Katie and the girls at uh, Horoscope Night, which I loved, by the way, so beautiful. Beautiful, Allie did that. I thought that was justified. But do you see that and think the same thing and wish that you had? Because you weren't, it wasn't even you were on like, you know, nine with Sandoval and maybe three or four with Katie. But how do you feel about that? Do you see that and wish like, I wish I wouldn't have snapped back at her and just been like, you know what? Forget you. No, I was mad at Katie in that moment. Okay. 
I was like, how dare you take me to a place where I look at you like you're my enemy? Yeah. Like, I'm not okay with the side you just... And I asked her, I said, so why are you bringing this out of me right now? Yeah. Like, you know me. And that's why at, at the end... I apologize to Ariana because I never, if I'm bringing my experience into something, it's almost me trying to let the person know that I'm talking to. Like, I see you. And also on the other side, and I feel like I've been pretty open about this, that I don't want people to end up like me. You said that in your interview. Right. So if there's anything that I can try, and maybe it becomes um, patronizing, but it's like, if there, if there was something that I could have done differently, I want to tell you this is what I would have done differently. And if you choose to go down this path that you're on, that's totally fine. But I feel like I have to share this with you because I don't want you to end up where I ended up. Mm-hmm. You know, and here we are four, four or five months in. Like we still have time to kind of shift. You know, you don't want to be two and a half years down the road where you're like, Oh, I still cannot bring myself to date someone. Right. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes makes sense. sense. Was there tension? Because you guys said the week before was Tahoe. Was there tension between you and Katie before that night? Or was it just in that moment? Like around that time? I don't know if you remember. Was there some sort of tension? Or was it because you went to Tahoe and like, or was it just in that moment? No, I don't know if you guys remember. um, I want to say it was probably last... Like, right before the reunion of season 10, Mm -hmm. Katie had gone on a podcast saying that the vibes were off with us. Yes. Something had happened. So this was around the same time? No. No. No, no, no. I'm saying that something had happened, and we we just, or I, I don't know about her, we just never came back to where we were. Oh, okay. You're saying something specific happened that we're not going to talk about here. And then ever since then, it's just been a little different. It may be talked about at some point in time. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about it today. But I felt like after that happened, we looked at each other differently. Mm -hmm. And we distanced ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so this season that you're watching of me and Katie, obviously we're in a different place now, but we're talking about the season It was like a lot of trying to like correct. There was just never resolution. Mm -hmm. It was like one thing after the other that we just could not quite conquer and see eye to eye. As the season goes on though, you'll see that we, we soften up with each other. But I mean that, that fight, you picked me up that night, Easton. Yeah. Were you on 10 when you left? Oh, Oh, yeah. You did because you know they ended that scene where you're laughing and Katie looks upset and you look like you got over it. Was that the first time that you saw Katie and Ariana from Tahoe, coming home from Tahoe or no? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was. Okay. So Mm -hmm. maybe there is a big reason of why because I didn't even see him talk to Sheena even. I have. It didn't seem like. Yeah, Yeah. no, it was. We hadn't seen each other. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to my notes from the scene, which are kind of down lower. But I have to say, you. There's another one. Um, oh, oh. There are so many times in this episode where I'm like, you are saying the things that need to be said, which is like not surprising. That's why people love you, but that are hard to say, and you could have gone on not saying them. For instance, when you defended Sheena with Ariana, that was like. Hell yeah. Ariana heard you. You stood up for your friend. You spoke so well, too. You're like, you were really, like, talking to Ariana like a human. Like, come on. We can't. I think you said something like, we can't shut down like this or something. And you just, that was so important. And I was like, go, Lala. And then I think the horoscope uh, scene with Katie. Because in that, you could have been like, this is a girl's night. This is fun. Screw it. I'm not going to say what's on my mind. But you did. You were like, no, this needs to be said. I'm going to say what I'm feeling. Well, you want to know what happens when I don't say what I'm feeling in the moment? What? We have an explosion yeah. that we cannot come back from where I'm extremely hurtful. <laughs> and even though I probably mean the things that I'm saying, I probably wouldn't say, you know, most yeah. of the time with friends, I'm sure there's a lot of things. We could obliterate each other all the live long day. Mm-hmm. But it's like we choose not to do that because it's like the good outweighs the bad with you. But if I start pushing little things under the rug, 
I'm going to say everything that I feel about you for real. Mm-hmm. I love you, but we're not going to come back from the little things yeah. that bug me about you. <laughs> yeah. But that was so, and did Sheena ever, did Sheena know that happened or did she see it on, I guess, what would it be? Um, last night's episode? Yeah. No. And and did she see it and then say something to you? Like, did she know you said something to Ariana? I told her. We Remember, we record a lot of footage. Right. So we can't air everything. Right. I had a conversation with her. She ended up calling me saying I saw her post and I know that she only did that because of you. And I said to Sheena, but she didn't just do that because of me. Mm -hmm. Because I could have said those things and she could have thrown it out the window and gone about her merry way. Mm -hmm. I shed light and perspective and then it was up to her. So if she posted that, that came from her. That had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Just like there's many times where people have to shed light for me so I can see it from a different perspective. But what I choose to do with that. That's not because of the other person. Mm-hmm. How I shift and move after that, I deserve that credit. And I think Ariana deserves the credit for posting that because even though I said what I said, she didn't have to. Yeah. You Very know? well said. But also, I think you both do because if you said it in a different way and you came at her, not a human, but as a like, whatever, like that's fucked up or whatever, came at her aggressively, that could have been a different outcome. She could have been like, wow, you're acting wild. No, I'm not saying anything. Back off. And then, so I think it's both of you. Credit to both of you for sure. Well, thank you. Just going back to the top, Sheena talking with Lisa, I really loved her line because we all know she (laughs) wanted Dancing with the Stars. We know that. She wanted that. Not over Ariana, but she, that's something she said in the scene. She wrote it on her vision board or whatever. So when she said, I can be happy for Ariana and sad for me at the same time. I know Sheena's getting a lot of like memes and stuff right now about like her making stuff about her, but I think that was beautiful and well said because yes, you can and it happens in life. There are things that happen with our friends, with our family, with our partners where we're like, damn, I wanted that so bad and well, I mean, you, you got could, that. You could turn this into sports. Yeah. I can, if me and my buddy are going out and trying out for a team and he makes it, I'm going to be happy for him, but I can still be sad for me. Yes. Like, that is a thing. Like, I don't understand how people can't see that side of it. Yeah. How did you feel about yeah, that Yeah, I want to know your part scene. Or see, your and thought. that's that's why I think at times I have to come to, not have to, but want to come to Sheena's defense because I don't know if it's, like, maybe the tone of her voice. You know, there's no tone like Sheena's. <laughs> I... I'm obsessed. <laughs> so I'm obsessed. I love it. <laughs> you so you guys funny. know what yes, I mean. Yes, of course. That, she's from the Valley of Los Angeles, oh, honey. Yes. That is, we're making a cameo at the Val party. <laughs> like, she's... <laughs> and I think sometimes it doesn't hit hit the way... And, and it's wild because when she and I were talking, we were on the same... We were on the same page. Yeah. You know, like... And I understood because she was battling that. She's like, I just don't... I don't want to say that I'm bummed for me because I am so happy for her, but I don't want people to think that I'm making it about me. And I'm like, Sheena, I understand where you're coming from. I was so happy to see the world rally around my friend when this happened, but I couldn't help but feel like, damn, that would have felt really good to have that. That Mm -hmm. doesn't mean I wish my friend didn't. Like, I get it. Both can be true at the same time. I will follow it up and say, I wish she left out. She's come a long way from being my backup dancer. I think that's where the Uh, meme is starting to come from. I was like, Sheena, no. And I don't know if she meant it as a joke and the tone was like, the tone didn't hit. And it was like, oh, that's funny. But I was like, oh, it would have been so good if you left that out. (laughs) Yeah, that was rough to watch. Yes, and then it like clipped to the performance. Oh. Oh, No, I I agree. Now, if I were not in the mix and I were just a viewer, I'd be like, ooh, that shade little bitch. <laughs> but th- yeah, no, I felt this. I was like, oh, no, sheesh. I know. We came. We, I, we were so on so, the right path. You were you know? so close. <laughs> and and then you just overfilled the cup. I know. You overfilled the cup. By the way, I feel like I can say that because I am the queen of accidentally Overfilling. <laughs> That's all you do. Yes. That's all I do. I'm so, and then I say one thing and I'm like, 
damn it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to give her that she said it trying to be silly and it didn't come, or like funny or making like a quippy remark and it didn't come off right. That's what I'm going to say. I don't like that my friend can never win with the audience. Oh, Sheena? Yeah. I know. It's it's very, very annoying. It's a tough, I would be annoyed too, because she's like an OG OG. Like, didn't didn't this show start by, like, following her? Girl, yeah. without Sheena, there is no Le Vanderpump. That's, well, not, Van, not Lisa Vanderpump. But <laughs> Vanderpump sh- rules. Vanderpump yeah. rules. For, to me, for me, if I were Sheena, I'd be like, dude, I have given you guys my life for this many years. Like, cut me some slack sometimes. But they, I, right? I, the audience is freaking tough. Yes, but all yeah, but also I think sometimes she doesn't realize. But the one thing that was in that <laughs> in the episode is from her grant or her chart is she has to coming back to cups. She needs to fill her cup up first, mm. and I think she's trying to fill up even her her fans by trying to please them. And I think if Sheena were just to be Sheena, everyone would rally That's because we, she is so dope. And the other thing that I want to say about Sheesh, she was also very upset. Take her not getting Dancing with the Stars and Ariana getting it out of it. The one thing that she continued to talk to me about was, this is one of my closest friends, and I feel like I'm finding out about her life with fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On social media. Yes. You know? And that's hurtful, too, because it's important things. And Sheena's, I'm sure, feeling like, I'm sitting here and I'm supporting you and I love you, yet I'm finding, yeah, finding out with, like, a press release. Right. It's like, what is going on? Yeah. Well, it a was, lot of people did yeah. not make sense to, as you, as the season goes on, you're going to see me get to a place where I'm fed up with every single person. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm excited. Where I'm, I'm like, just, the yeah. way y'all are moving and I'm out in these streets trying to keep the lights on, keep the family fed and get into a state of mind, body and spirit where I can have a healthy, happy baby. Y'all are fucking my shit up. Yeah. And I'm not having it. Well, speaking of that, let's jump to the office scene where you talk about your rebranding journey or starting. This was so beautiful and sweet because this is the first time on the show, I believe, that you mention the sperm donor. Mm -hmm. And you're very solid. And you hear Lisa says, like, do you really want to do that in her own words? And you're like, no, no, no. This is what I've decided. So how did you feel watching that back, especially since you just announced your pregnancy? How it wild. was very weird. Yeah. Watching that and then where we are now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's I it's hard to explain. Yeah. Because sitting there talking about like picking a donor and this is what I'm doing. And now here I am. We've done the process. Donors picked. Bye. We we never need to talk about you ever again. Because mm-hmm. here we are with baby. And I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. And I finally saw the profile picture of the baby. So it made it so real. And by the way, the side profile of this kid. Stunning. The cutest little peanut. So cute. No, it's so cute. That made it once we, it was like heartbeat and they're showing you and it's literally like the size of a pea. You're like, (laughs) oh, cool. (laughs) Fun. And I asked Stassi because I'm, I'll be honest, because this is so different. Sometimes you do think oh my gosh, I don't feel the same way that I felt when I was pregnant with Ocean. Mm -hmm. And I asked Stoss and she was like, La, it's just because it's your second. I'm telling you. She goes, I used to obsess over the app with Hartford. Like, oh, it's the size of a chia seed now. Oh, it's the size of a grapefruit. She goes, I didn't know how many weeks I was, what the bait, like I could not. She goes, it was a completely different experience. Is it because you're taking care of another kid? It's it's because you've done it. If you've done you've it. You've heard it, yeah. you've heard the heartbeat inside your your body before. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's just different. It's, you know that at 13 weeks this is what's developing. You just walk in and go, just tell me if it's healthy. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, tell, all right, have a good one. And even if that wasn't the case, I think it'd be, which I know it is, but like with Chloe, her being vulnerable and sharing the fact that she didn't feel as attached with her surrogate baby. Uh, of course it's changed now. This is like the love of her life, this little boy. But in on the show, she was like struggling. And I just think it's so beautiful and vulnerable when moms share that. Because if they didn't, you would feel like a crazy person. If you're like, I can't, I'm, I don't feel. What's wrong with what's me? What's wrong with me? Yes. Right. And 
ugh, I just think it's really lovely. But um, anyway, yes, yes, that was very exciting. And I think yeah. it was having someone be like, are you sure you want to do this? Mm-hmm. It's important for people to know that like I didn't just decide this overnight. Like this conversation about getting a donor happened when Ocean was eight months old. We sat down as a family. <laughs> we did. Took a vote. <laughs> and here we are. Here, wow. We truly did do that, though. I was like, I'm thinking about for the next baby. Ocean, still an infant. Can't walk, can't talk. Still need mama to the fullest. So when anyone was talking about, are you sure? It's like, we are so far past that conversation like, at this point, this is just, like, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Right. <laughs> right. It wasn't just willy-nilly. Yeah, no, overnight. Not at all. You mentioned, um, and I know, you know, there will be more coming out about this in the future, but you mentioned the brand stuff, and mm-hmm. I know you have a lot of exciting stuff coming up, but what can you say about that? Because I think some people were surprised <gasps> that you're dropping Give Them Lala. You're not dropping it, but it, you're just sort of, like, tucking it away for now. I took a beat about like give them Lala. And I just feel like I'm in such a different zone in my life. Mm -hmm. And people can be like, that's not true. Look at where you're sitting right now. Your face is everywhere. (laughs) But like, I just don't, it's, it, it represents a part of my life that doesn't exist anymore. And I don't really, I'm grateful for it, but we've, we've moved on. And I don't want to say that, my past, I need you guys to kind of read between the lines here. My past is something that I I want to not exist, but it takes me to a place where I can say, oh, when I created this, this is where I was in my personal life. I don't want to pay any more um, attention to that time at all. If it runs, if something that I did runs parallel to that part of my life, it is out. Mm-hmm. We're done. We are starting so fresh, so new. I need everything to stand on its own. I want Lala to just be a person and not shoved in your face all the live long day. The podcast is one thing because here we are talking, but like the beauty and all of those things, there just needs to be a shift. As you guys know, I show up looking like this more times than not. Yeah. My life is different. I'm doing well to put a face on. I'm doing well <laughs> to do my my hair. Like I'm trying to do a lot of things while still being a mom. And I would say that the biggest part of my life, I love working, but my biggest part of the biggest part of my life is being a single parent. Right. And I love watching you embrace it. And I feel like, you know, watching you work on these things behind the scenes, so authentic because you're really diving into the things you care about. Like your heart is in the future that I I feel like I don't want to get too specific, but that is exciting too. Because when you're really working on things and with things you love and care about, like people see it. People follow. Yeah. You're not following the people, hey? Right. I feel this is, it's wild to have reached this level of just pure independence in every single aspect of well life. earned and well deserved mm. but really think about it it's crazy no it is it's been crazy to watch because even when i started working for you it's a completely different life it's a completely different life and i'm like you just it's crazy no it is i mean last time i was driving up like it's, it seems like yesterday driving up into the tree house and then it, I'm here. It's the, everything. And now I'm going to your home. It's no. everything yeah. is so weird. And that's why I don't want to say that I want to forget about my past because I don't. Like the fact that that part of my life got me teed up to where we are now and what our future holds is so incredible. And I could not be any more grateful. Mm-hmm. The people in my circle, like, I just feel like we've really got it figured out. And I know dark days, they're looming for all of us. But right now, I'm just nothing but gratitude. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that was weird. How do we get on that? That was weird. Deep bur tangent. I liked it. I, liked I think it. because that question, the rebrand the brand, mm-hmm. and yeah. all that, and it's like, it's so much bigger than that. Yeah. yeah. This it's- is like we're shedding skin of like the past and starting anew where I'm a phoenix (laughs) 
rising and I'm from a the rising, ashes. bitch. I'm a rising. <laughs> yes. This was before we even chose a sperm donor. You're like, and I hope that I'm walking into that reunion with a pregnant belly. You manifested that because you will be. My love, I've stayed manifesting my whole life. You think we're just in here because uh, we we hit the lottery? Fuck no, bitch. I was sitting in Utah, the ripe old age of seven, going, (laughs) all good things. (laughs) (laughs) With my little manifesting board. (laughs) I love it. I love it. <laughs> you think we just ended up right. here, ho? This is called a manifestation. A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm just kidding. This I is called it. God's plan. God's plan. God's plan. And I always trust in it. Okay? Amen, sister. So if tomorrow Amen. they're like, you have nothing, I'm like, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to trust in God. <laughs> Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. All right, everybody. Uh, what is your ache and relief of the week? Ache and relief. My ache is physical, but it works into my relief. I um, did jujitsu on Sunday, open mat, and I am physically aching because I'm training for, oh, uh, more on this later, but a competition I signed up for, the date and everything. So people are helping me. And it it works into my relief because this, I was at the gym and all of these people who are competing before me are just like helping me and like helping train me. And it's like a team. They're like, oh, Jessica's a white belt. She's about to compete. So like- I thought you were going to say Jessica's a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> she needs all the help she <laughs> True though. True. A white Need belt. all the help okay, I that's can a get. Belt. <laughs> Is that the lowest? Yes. Lowest, like low, 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 low. Okay. So they're all helping me. And I'm just like, the girls, the guys, they're like pushing me. They're like, come on, you got more than that. And I'm like, this is so nice. Like, I love these people. It's such a good energy. They're taking time out of their own training to train me. And it's just like, I was very grateful for that, which led me into being grateful for the relationships in my life. I wrote down (sighs) Kyle, you guys, my family, and my gym people. I'm very lucky to be surrounded by amazing people in work, in personal life. And I'm just so, that's my relief of the week. I'm very grateful. That's beautiful, Jess. Thanks. I love that. Thank you. What about you guys? We're lucky to have you too. Why? Thank you. (laughs) Mutual feeling. Easton, what's up? All right. So should I, I'm going to do my ache first. Yeah, ache it out. Ache it out. My ache, guys, is (laughs) Jake LeBaron. Who's Jake LeBaron? Exactly. Shout out. San Antonio, Texas, dolphin trainer. Boo, shame. Shame. He's my ache of the week with everything we know. He's still out here doing that. So who, who is he? A, a dolphin trainer? A dolphin trainer. Where? Oh, do you know what you like? It just says San Antonio, Texas. And dolphin trainer, artist. Jake P L E B A R O N. Artist his my ass. IG. Okay. So, but he is my ache of the week. I saw that and it just irked me. You to know see, what? You know Wake what it's up, like John. SeaWorld? Do you own an internet <laughs> connection? What the fuck is wrong with you? But no, yeah. You know when you see SeaWorld you and you're like, you get it because they're posting it, but yeah. like for this Does guy, he work at SeaWorld? No, he's just freelance, baby. Freelance? <laughs> Where is he stealing the dolphins from? <laughs> Oh my God, Jake! What a weirdo, Jake! You is little. This a photo, oh, is this you, Jake? It. Oh, See? nice photo, Jake. Boo. Okay, so and then my relief was okay. O's birthday. <gasps> it was so fun. Oh yeah, it was so fun. So that so was my fun. relief. It was fun seeing all the kiddos I play and that. all of that. So that was my it relief. It was so fun. Okay, so I have to say that. Um, I have no aches. <gasps> Stop. I have not a one ache. I'm Is on this freaking, a first? Yeah, I'm on cloud freaking nine. No way. And nothing gonna shake my stuff. Nothing gonna slow <laughs> me down. Oh, oh no. no. So that's how I'm feeling. Um, and then, thank you, thank you. I was gonna say <laughs> my relief. I was gonna get real cheesy and say my life right now. Mmm, that's cute. Just all the relieving. <laughs> but Walrus Whisperer posted. Uh, this was a few days ago. 
Breaking news, a termination notice has been sent from the Miami-Dade mayor's office to the Miami Seaquarium. It is official. The county is ending their lease. So they have ended the Miami Seaquarium's lease. The Miami Seaquarium's nearly 70-year existence is coming to an end. And then he says, as promised. Yes! Walrus Whisperer. It is boots on the ground, hey, bitches. Yes. Yes. Ten toes we down. Love you. <laughs> Ten toes. Not fucking around. <laughs> Not fucking around. I love him. So that is my um, relief. Where will the animals go? Do you know? Um, they're going to have to Probably figure like out seaside sanctuaries. sanctuaries. Okay, yeah. sanctuaries. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. And if you do not follow him, I highly recommend it. It's walrus, W-A-L-R-U-S underscore whisperer. Okay? And he posts incredible content. He's very inspiring. And he could educate you, which is also very nice. Um, you guys, I want to thank you for listening to another regular old episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Remember... We, um, for the regular episodes, are everywhere you get your podcasts on Wednesdays. The visual, meaning YouTube, drops on Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And then remember, boner, bonus, (laughs) (laughs) bonus episodes, I did mean to do that. (laughs) Bonus episodes drop uh, every Monday, video and audio. Yeah, same day. Yep, you're welcome. All right, I love you guys. (laughs) Happy, (laughs) Happy hump day, bye. Thank you so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. Did I get all three? I'm getting really good at that.